And as we increase these numbers, things fall into place. So this is now an area fill pattern. Hello and welcome to this uh, preview video for the new series we will be making. Let me just quickly tell you that this preview video is meant to be an arc between the Alibra Tips and Tricks series and uh, the new series in our channel, which is going to be strategies and methodologies that work across parametric CAD systems, right? We want to show you that uh, uh, no matter what CAD systems you have, the basics are the same. And you can get 99% of the same work done in any parametric mechanical CAD system. Now that does not involve surfacing and it doesn't involve uh, direct modeling, but uh, it involves and it, it's about everything else. But let's start with the subject of this video, which is how to create an area fill pattern, even if your CAD system doesn't have that feature. Now, the way you do that is by using this equation. Okay, this equation will give you the distance between the instances of the pattern right? so that you can fill an area. There are four variables to it. First variable is the feature length. Uh, now that is the length of the feature we will be patterning projected towards the direction of the pattern. So to fill this area we need two directions along this edge and along this edge. So the feature length along this edge is uh, the distance between the corners of the hexagon, which is also the diameter of the circumscribed circle. And along the second direction, if we project the hexagon along the second direction, the feature length is the distance between the straights or the flats of the hexagon which is the diameter of the inscribed circle. Now, in this equation, we also have a feature for, um, for the distance from the edge, right? So maybe we don't want the feature pattern to start straight from the edge. We want a certain distance to appear uh, before and after the pattern. So that's this distance here, again across one, across uh, the first direction, direction one, this distance is the distance from this edge to the corner of the hexagon. Along the second direction, that distance will be the distance from this edge to the flat of the hexagon. Okay? Uh, now, third variable, that's the length we want to fill, basically. So, this length and this length. And the fourth number is the number of instances. You can understand pretty clearly what that is. Um, and by creating this equation and uh, putting it in the value for the distance between patterns, we can fill that uh, direction with patterns, with the patterned instances, right? Uh, but let's let's go and see an example of that. So here we have uh, the same uh, sketch, right? This is the pattern we want to feature, right? No! Uh, it is a it is a hexagon, and it is designed so that it is concentric to this fillet arc, and uh, we only need to con to constrain it concentrically to this arc, and give it a a value for the distance between flats for the, the diameter of the inscribed circle to fully constrain it. Well, I've also made this line horizontal along the x-axis, and now it is fully constrained. Uh, fully defined in a Libre, fully constrained. These terms have to do with the design intent, and we will be discussing it in a later video, what fully defined means and what design intent means. But uh, we also needed more numbers for our variables, right? So let's start creating them. This is the diameter of the circumscribed circle, which is also 
as we said earlier, the length of our feature along direction one. Uh, Alibre allows you to create parameters from driven dimensions. Uh, most CAD systems do. If yours doesn't, please leave a comment and I'll uh, explain to you how you can get these uh, numbers if your system does not allow the creation of parameters from driven dimensions. So this is the length of our feature across dimension one. Okay, we created that. Let's also create the length of our feature along, well, uh, now that was not needed, right? So let's, let's just delete that. It's deleted automatically. We don't need that. The reason we don't need that is because we have it. We defined it, okay? So this is the length of the feature across direction two. Uh, if I'm going a bit too fast, please go back and rewatch it. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Now, let's also get the distance from the edge for the first direction. I'm just going to call that distance edge one. There we go. And the distance from the edge along the second direction. And I'm going to call this distance along the edge two. Okay. So now we have everything we need to create our pattern, right? Um, well, we do have everything we need, but to make it even more easy for us, right? Let's just uh, uh, say that this is the length along the direction, uh, along the second direction, the vertical. This is along the first direction, right? This will make it easier to see what's what uh, when we're writing the equation. So we've got everything in place. Let's start creating that area fill pattern. So we select the feature to pattern, select our first uh, direction, and the number of the, uh, instances is all is given a name automatically by the CAD system. Uh, also, let me say that you will find something like this in any CAD system. Some may have it as a separate tree here on the left. Some may have it as a pop-up window, but the options are the same. So let's start writing our equation. Um, I usually start writing the equation and go and then go to the equation editor. Uh, it's a syntax error. It shows up in red and I can find it more easily when I have many variables. So what was our equation? So it's the instance, number of instances, C1 times this parenthesis. Length along direction one minus the length of feature along direction one minus twice the distances from the edge along direction one. And then we divide it by this parenthesis, which is Instances squared minus the number of instances. Okay, and we got a number. We hit OK, and look what happened. It basically mirrored it, right? So that's how you fill this direction when you only have two uh, instances. But as I increase them, you see that they fall in place. Uh, so let's go make the second direction. Yes, so this is the second direction, and let's start making our equation. Uh, you will see that basically this is the exact same thing. You just take the ones and make them into twos. That's about it. Okay. And there you go. Okay. Now we don't see anything happening here. That's probably because this is, right? It was going upwards and it's a cut. So it was just cutting air. Uh, 
But look at what happened. Well, first of all, we have four hexagons concentric to the four fillets. That's design intent. Okay? And as we increase these numbers, things fall into place. So this is now an area fill pattern. We change the number of instances, and the area becomes filled with the correct number of holes. Okay. And uh, let's just demonstrate that uh, this works. And the design intent is kept. And uh, that it adapts to what happens. Okay. So let's open our equation editor. Now, first of all, let's change the size of our fillet. Okay, smaller fillets, it's, uh, the hexagons are concentric to the fillets, so more area to be covered, it did it. Uh, let's give it a huge fillet. Okay, again, it did it. And uh, let's go back, let's, let's say 25, and let's change the overall lengths. 300 for this dimension, and uh, I don't know. 125 for this should be fine and there you go right so you can clearly see that there is some design intent that is followed by applying this equation and filling up this area in a very very certain and mathematically defined way uh, and the beauty of this is this can work in any parametric mechanical CAD system that can take equations as values for dimensions. And that's very powerful. So this was a preview, an arc between the Alibra tips and tricks and the new series, which is uh, design strategies that work across CAD systems. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope I see you in the next one.